All right, so we're going to go through the moon phases the way that I would on the blackboard uh, or chalkboard in a um, classroom uh, setting. And what I'd like you to try to do is follow along by making your own same kind of drawing. And anytime that it's not clear to you why you're adding to it um, the way that I added to it, it might be worth just rewinding and listening to the description again, because it's really going to help us build up an understanding of why the moon phases look the way that they do. Okay, so we'll start out by having sunlight come in from one side. Because the sun is so far away from the earth and the moon, that we can just treat that sunlight as coming in um, at parallel lines. And so we're going to have the moon's orbit all the way around. And the earth is here in the middle. Uh, we won't worry too much about it. And we want to build up our understanding of moon phases, both where the moon is relative to the sun for each of these, and um, why it looks the way that it does uh, at each of these different moon phases. So let's start out with this one. If we think about what part of the moon, which half of the moon is lit up with sunlight, this is the side of the moon that has sunlight, and this is the side that is dark. We don't get to see that side. If we were on the moon at the time, if we were standing on this side, it would be daytime on the moon. If we were standing on this side, it would be nighttime on the moon. This situation would be new moon where we don't get to see any of the lit up side. If we fast forward two weeks over to the other um, extreme, we have the side that's lit up is the side facing the sun still. And the side that is dark is the side away from the sun. If we're standing on Earth looking, we get to see all of that lit up side of the moon. And so we would call that the full moon. Now the view that we're looking at right now, uh, we're going to treat as top down and what that means is we're kind of floating around in space, we're able to look down at the north pole of the earth and what that means is earth is going to be rotating counterclockwise, that's just how it works, we don't have to memorize that fact, but it also means that the moon as it moves through its orbit every month is moving counterclockwise as well, so this whole time it's moving counterclockwise. So from new moon, if we wait another day, we now have the moon shifted slightly. I'm not going to draw all of the moons all of the time, but it shifted slightly. And now we'd be able to see a little tiny crescent of it um, lit up on the right side. That would be a crescent moon. And if we've looked through all of the different uh, lecture videos for chapter four, it's a crescent shape and it's getting more illuminated from no illumination to more illuminated from our point of view. And so this would be a waxing crescent. This whole portion of the um, orbit, so one day, the next day, the next day, the next day, we're just getting a more and more filled in crescent moon. Now for the top here, and I'm going to make sure to draw it so we can see it, we have the side facing the sun is lit up still. The side away from the sun is dark still. And this would be the first quarter moon. And the, some students get a little bit confused because what we see in our sky for a first quarter moon is a half circle. But that quarter refers to the fact that it's a quarter of the way around the circle. So first quarter, we could call the full moon second quarter. We don't, but we could. There we go. So first quarter, second quarter is the full moon. Third quarter down here is again dark on the side away from the sun and lit up on the side towards the sun. And this would be a third quarter moon. That's what we'll call it. 
but you might see some places call it the last quarter, and that's also going to be okay too. And again, it's moving uh, in its orbit from one day to the next in this direction. And then we eventually get to new moon, which is the fourth and final quarter, or <clears throat> the zeroth quarter. So first quarter, full moon, third quarter, new moon. Okay, so we already talked about waxing crescent. We started with not being able to see any of the moon. The next couple of days we can see more and more. And from our point of view on Earth, that would look like a waxing crescent moon where we might start out with a really, really thin sliver and we might get closer and closer to eventually, of course all of those are uh, out of screen, uh, we start out with a really, really thin crescent, we get a slightly thicker crescent, and eventually for the first quarter moon, what we'll get is um, from Earth, what we see is a half circle where this side is lit up. So the moon is getting lit up from right to left. From the first quarter over, we're seeing more than half a circle, and we have a word for that. That word is gibbous. And we're still getting more illuminated, so this whole section would be a waxing gibbous. From the night after the first quarter all the way through until we get to full moon, all of those nights would be waxing gibbous ones, where we're getting slightly more and more towards a um, towards a full moon. A full moon, what we would see is the full circle. And again, that's based on the fact that every part of what is facing towards Earth is lit up. Now, from full moon to third quarter, we're seeing less illumination over time, but we're still seeing a lot of the moon lit up. So we're still seeing a gibbous shape but it's a waning gibbous this time. It's getting less and less illuminated from one night to the next. So we would be seeing um, the moon get dark from right to left still. And so we would have the sort of big on one side and less so on the other. That would be our um, waxing gibbous shape. It's the same general shape as uh, what it was up here, but now it's flipped around. For third quarter moon, what we would see depends on what's facing the Earth. So I actually want you right now, if you've been drawing this as you go, I want you to pause the video. And what I want you to do is to flip your page around so that you're standing on Earth and this third quarter moon is kind of in front of you on the page. And then decide whether you can see the left or the right side lit up by standing on Earth facing kind of with the moon forward. So pause the video. Okay, so I can't flip the light board, that would be awesome. But if I like turned all the way around, what I would see is that this left side is lit up and the right side is not. So see the difference between first quarter moon, the right side is lit up, and third quarter moon, the left side is lit up. So, as we go from third quarter to new moon, we're seeing less and less of the moon lit up, and we're seeing smaller and smaller slivers of it lit up as well. So what we would be seeing, the shape would be a crescent, and because less of it is illuminated from one night to the next, it would be a waning crescent. And so what we would see is a smaller and smaller sliver of what we can actually see illuminated until we got over to new moon. Now I want to point out a couple of things on um, this uh, chart that we've made. The moons here that I'm going to circle, this one, this one, this one, and that one. All four of those circled moons are showing what the moon looks like if we're floating around in a spaceship out in space. We're not standing on Earth, we're looking around at what's being lit up by sunlight and what is 
in shadow because there is no sunlight. All of these other smaller um, drawings that I've made that are kind of all over the place are showing what we see on Earth based on facing towards this. We see darkness, 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 darkness. We see none of the new moon. But if we look at first quarter, we see darkness on the left, more darkness. Right in the middle, it goes from darkness to lit up. And then we see the whole right side lit up, which is why we drew it the way that we did here. So it will be good practice to try to, after this whole video is over, basically get a new sheet of paper and try drawing the two separate situations. One where we draw the, earth, the moon on its own orbit and we're realizing that every single time half of it is lit up and half of it is dark because there's always some side that is facing the sun and always some side that is um, in darkness. But that the part that is towards the earth, if we kind of cut off where um, the earth is and isn't or where we cut off where the earth is and isn't, the part that we see from Earth, if we're facing um, towards this thing, the left would be illuminated and the right would be um, dark. And again, we have to be on Earth facing it, which is why I suggested flipping our paper around. So I'll get off screen uh, to finish up this video so that you can kind of have this without me in the background. Uh, and you can pause the video if you want to. But the key thing is that if you haven't already um, while we were going through this, uh, it may be worth um, trying to draw as we go, so maybe even re-watching it as we go. One last thing I'll note, uh, and I've almost run out of space, I'm going to put it right over here in this box, is one of the um, mnemonics that some students have found helpful is to think of the word doc. Because, so, Doc, right, that's me. Uh, on any moon phase where we see the right side lit up, so the right side is lit up forming that D kind of shape, the right side is lit up forming that D kind of shape, same over here, that's always waxing. The O is nice and full, we see the full circle, right, that's our full moon here. Waxing then becomes a full moon. And then that C shape, whether we see it um, on the sort of fuller side on the left here, whether we see it on the left side for the third quarter moon or the um, C shape of a crescent, that's waning. And that may be a really helpful mnemonic um, to remember what order they go in. The fact that this, the moon lights up from right to left from our point of view, and it gets dark from right to left, meaning the left side's the last thing that we see still lit up before we get to new moon. That may be worth putting in your notes um, as well. All right, that's all I have for you uh, today.